got to, I've got to try the drive. <laughs> I've got to. I saw the only other day, he said he had five lines. Put a little more dubbing. Put a bit of a tiger on the end of it, if you will. Well, I'm going to cantanker as part of the old guys and push the engine now. For me, it's, this is a new fly tying technique, you know, although it's been around for over 10 years now, um, in Australia we've been, well, I've been playing with it for 10 years, but, you know, it's ultimately it's a new fly tying technique, and there's not many new techniques that you see. We see new materials, but we don't see many new ways of tying flies, of utilising these materials, and it, it gives you the ability to cre create a three-dimensional fly where, particularly with the dubbings that are translucent, it allows you to put something inside in the middle of the fly and then cover it with one of these clear, one of these clear strings. Yeah. Um, so that's just a clear stretchy string, but you, you can cover it with that and put your dubbing onto here and then when you brush it out, if it's a translucent dubbing, it allows you to see what's inside the fly. So, you know, you get to see the guts, where you don't usually do that. I just tried it on everything. I possibly could just try to see how far you could actually take this idea of putting the dubbing onto something other than the thread because for years we've put dubbing onto the threads to create the bodies on flies we've never considered putting dubbing onto chenille or onto stretchy cord or onto braided cords or even copper wire for little nymphs you know um, so it just opened up so many possibilities and my mind being what it is just well, went gaga for a few weeks so you're pinching this pretty tight yeah and then you just kind of the teasing little teasing bits out. it out okay but that you've got a good hold on that and is there too long of a tail on any of these no i don't think so okay so what we're trying to do with a with a with a bugger is put a big long tail on it as long as we can to help support the back of the hook. Try and get the hook in the front third of the fly. So when it swims, the the marabou supports it, and, and you'll get a little bit of an undulating action with it. If you have a short tail on it, it, it hangs tail down in the water. Um, and it just doesn't swim anywhere near as well. And, and you know, the swimming action, the more action we can put into it and the more natural it looks in the water, the more chance we've got of a fish eating it. Yeah, well, it's the whole the sharing of information, as I've said a number of times. I, 
I really hate the secret men's business of fly fishing. This, this idea that you don't tell people anything and you keep it a secret. The only reason we fly fish is someone's shared the information with us somewhere, be it your dad, your uncle, a friend or whatever. You know, someone has shared information with you which has created a passion in you to go out and do this sport. Isn't it our right to then pass that on to other people and keep the sport growing and expanding? We should just share the information with everybody. At the end of the day, the more fishermen we have, the stronger our voice is so that we can get better regulations, we can get better you know, government policy in regards to looking after the environment where our fishers live, yeah. you know, and not polluting and, and all these other things that, you know, we, you can't get anywhere if you're only 10 people jumping up and down. But if you're a million people jumping up and down, they, they tend to listen to you. Yeah.